One Day at a Time is a television series that started in 1975 and quickly became a favorite for many viewers. The show follows the life of a single mother and her two children as they navigate the ups and downs of everyday life. It's love for its honest portrayal of family and the strength of its characters who deal with real issues in a way that's both touching and humorous. The series stands out for its relatable characters and the way it addresses social issues which was quite bold for its time. It's not just a show, it's a mirror to society that still reflects the challenges and triumphs of families today. As for fascinating facts, did you know that the show was one of the first to be developed by a woman, Whitney Blake? This fact alone shows the pioneering spirit of the series. Now, we're curious about your connection to One Day at a Time. What's your most memorable moment from the show? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Stay tuned for more fun, shocking, and heartfelt facts that will make you see this classic series in a whole new light. Keep watching. Getting paddled whether Ms. R knows it or not, so why upset her? What'd you the television series One Day at a Time was a notable show from the 1970s that explored the life of Anne Romano, a red-haired divorcee and mother of two daughters, Julie and Barbara. The series delved into various social issues of the time, such as divorce, teenage struggles, substance abuse, and emotional turmoil. Anne's character, portrayed by Bonnie Franklin, was a strong woman navigating the challenges of single parenthood. The Handyman Schneider, played by Pat Harrington Jr., often served as a support system for the family. The show did not shy away from tackling serious topics, including an episode where Anne confronts the dangers of drug abuse to protect her daughter from a harmful relationship. The series stood out for its willingness to address real-life problems and the impact they have on families. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh-oh. In the world of television, family dynamics and personal journeys often intertwine with the careers of those who portray these stories. Greg Evigan, known for his role as a father, shares his life with Pamela Serp and their children Jason Evigan, a self-made musician with the After Midnight Project, and daughters Vanessa and Brianna Evigan, who have also pursued artistic paths. Valerie Bertinelli, another key figure in the show, works closely with her agent Mark Schwartz. The show's longevity, spanning nine successful seasons, is a testament to its appeal and the dedication of its cast and crew. Despite the network's desire to extend its run, lead actress Bonnie Franklin felt that the series had reached a natural conclusion, opting not to continue beyond its ninth season. Hey, Sam. In the world of television and personal milestones, the actors from the classic show have marked significant moments in their lives. Shelley Fabre was accompanied down the aisle by her sister, Smokey Fabre, during her wedding to Mike Farrell. Valerie Bertinelli received recognition for her work on television with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, a testament to her successful career. Pat Harrington Jr., known for his memorable character Dwayne F. Schneider, kept the role alive well beyond the show's run by bringing it back for a series of commercials in the late 1980s. I am talking about Cam Randolph, the race driver. Don't... In the landscape of television, guest appearances by notable actors can add a unique touch to a show's dynamic. This was the case when Corey Feldman and Mark Hamill each took on the role of Schneider's nephew in separate episodes, bringing their own flair to the beloved series. Meanwhile, Nanette Fabre, whose career spanned decades, was honored with the Women's International Center Living Legacy Award in 1993, a testament to her enduring appeal and talent. Additionally, the birth year of Shelley Fabre has been a topic of discussion, with various sources citing different years. However, official records confirm that she was born in 1944, settling the debate and highlighting the importance of accuracy and historical documentation. These instances reflect the show's connection with its audience through relatable characters and the real-life resonance of its cast members. I want to show you that, okay? Isn't a normal procedure to ring the bell before entering a tenant's apartment? In the landscape of television, actors bring unique backgrounds that enrich their performances. Nanette Fabry, a notable actress, rests at Holy Cross Cemetery in Culver City, California. Mackenzie Phillips, who stepped into the music scene with her father's group, The Mamas and the Papas, lent her voice during its revival. Chuck McCann, recognizable for his character roles, typically portrays a grumpy leader with a less savvy companion, sharing the screen with actors like Tim Conway and Bob Denver. Each actor's journey adds a distinct touch to their roles, reflecting their personal experiences and talents. 
Schneider, you know, you really got to take it easy. You're not 20 years old anymore. Mackenzie Phillips, known for her role in the original series, took to the stage as Lily St. Regis in the National Tour of Annie, which had a stop at Hollywood's Panages Theater in October 2005. The memorable theme song, This Is It, was originally performed by Polly Cutter. In the series reboot, the song was reimagined by Gloria Estefan. Chuck McKen, typically known for his comedic roles, took on a serious character as the deaf-mute Anatopoulos in the heart is a lonely hunter acting alongside Alan Arkin who played Mr. Singer. These instances highlight the diverse talents of the cast members in their careers beyond the show. You saw that on TV. That's okay, Mom. The part with the kiss came on after the family out. The show's dynamic shifted before it even hit the airwaves with a significant change to the family structure. Initially, the mother character was to navigate life with a single child. However, network feedback prompted a revision, introducing a second daughter to the mix, portrayed by Valerie Bertinelli. This alteration aimed to add more depth and variety to the family's interactions and storylines. Bonnie Franklin, known for her role as the mother, continued her acting pursuits beyond the sitcom. In 1999, she took to the stage in Pittsburgh, performing in the intense drama Who is Afraid of Virginia Woolf at the Public Theater, showcasing her range and dedication to her craft. The character Schneider, the building's superintendent, presented a backstory that evolved over time. In the initial episode, he is depicted as a married man, but this detail is quickly discarded, with only passing references to a brief, annulled marriage. His romantic narrative takes a turn when he contemplates a serious commitment to Ginny Rablicki, hinting at a more complex personal life than previously explored. Would you say that that man did not have a happy divorce? Hmm. I think his wife did. Hmm. In the landscape of television, characters often cross paths in unexpected ways. Such was the case with Boom Boom Turner, a character mentioned in both the show in question and all in the family. While never seen on screen in the former, the character shared a connection with Schneider, hinting at a shared universe with Archie's world. Gloria Leroy, known for portraying Boom Boom on All in the Family, graced the show with her presence as a different character, yet another friend of Schneider, maintaining the essence of the unseen Turner. Joseph Campanella, a notable actor from the series, shares his birthday with a diverse group of celebrities, including Icelandic singer Björk, actress Goldie Hawn, and others, showcasing the varied tapestry of talent born on that day. Jim Hutton's journey into acting began during his military service in Germany, where he not only honed his craft, but also established the first English-speaking theater in Berlin, demonstrating a commitment to the arts that extended beyond his on-screen roles. His legacy is a reminder of the rich history and dedication actors bring to their craft, shaping the stories that entertain and inspire audiences. Tell me, hey, uh, listen, you girls were supposed to clean when you came home from school. I mean, uh, Friday's general cleaning. John Hillerman's journey into acting began unexpectedly during his time in the U.S. Air Force when he tried out for a local play. His passion for the stage led him to leave Texas and join Washington, D.C.S.O. Street Theater, where he became a leading actor. His stage career was thriving until a chance encounter with director Peter Bogdanovich, who offered him a film role, prompted a shift to screen acting. This move marked the end of his stage career, but the start of a new chapter in film and television. Meanwhile, Jim Hutton was known for his towering height in Hollywood, standing at 6 feet 5 inches, which led to his pairing with the tall actress Paula Prentice in the film Where the Boys Are. Their notable height difference was a distinctive feature in their on-screen partnership. Wrong end. <laughs> In the years following the show's original run, cast members continued to make their mark. Mackenzie Phillips, who played Julie Cooper, shared her personal journey in the memoir High on Arrival, released in September 29. Co-authored with Hilary Lifton, the book delves into her life experiences. Nanette Fabry, known for her role as Grandma Catherine Romano, was honored with the Eleanor Roosevelt Humanitarian Award, recognizing her advocacy work. The show's cultural impact was evident when Mad Magazine created a parody titled One Dame at a Time, showcasing its significance in popular culture. Giving of our time than others. <laughs> well, maybe you could be in our show. A unique crossover occurred when Joseph Campanella, Nanette Fabre, Richard Masser, and Mackenzie Phillips appeared in both this show and Mary Tyler Moore. Nanette Fabry, despite her hearing impairment, 
not only regained her hearing through surgery, but also became a significant advocate for the hearing impaired, pushing for accessibility on television. In a storyline that mirrors the Roseanne series, the character Julie's departure and subsequent replacement by Alex, only for Julie to return later, added a layer of family dynamics and change that viewers found relatable. Third grade and you like a boy? You put bubblegum in his ear. <laughs> and when you're in Boyd Gaines, known for his role in the classic series, later joined Daphne Zuniga and John Cusack in the film The Sure Thing. John Hillerman, another familiar face, is an alumnus of the University of Texas at Austin. Valerie Bertinelli, who became a household name, was once the stepmother to Angela Vidal and Andy Vidal. These connections highlight the diverse paths and relationships formed beyond the screen, showcasing the personal and professional journeys of the cast members. That's it later, exactly if that's what you want. When? Anybody gonna say hello? Before her role in the popular sitcom, Bonnie Franklin was already familiar with the stage, having been the understudy for Sandy Duncan in Your Own Thing. Her resemblance to Duncan was notable during that period. In the show's narrative, the character Ginny, who becomes prominent in the second season, was preceded by a similar figure, Denny, in the first season. Denny's character shared Ginny's free-spirited nature and also had a connection with David. Additionally, another character named Ginny, distinct from the main character, makes an appearance at a party in the building within the first season. Meanwhile, Dick O'Neill showcased his range by portraying military officers of varying ranks across three episodes of M.A.S.H., moving from an admiral to a general, and finally, a colonel. Alex! Low-fat yogurt. Don't girls eat anything but low-fat yogurt. Alex! Jim Hutton, a talented actor, achieved a unique feat during his high school years by winning the New York State Oratorical Competition consecutively. His acting prowess was evident in the film Walk, Don't Run, which he always regarded as his finest work. Meanwhile, Chuck McKen, another gifted individual, was known for his exceptional ability to imitate the voices of the comedic duo Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy, often slipping into their accents during conversations about them. Frontier Special, the Winchester 3030. Wow. Yeah, if, uh, if Costa had this sitting book. During the 70s and 80s, Corey Feldman became a familiar face on television, featuring in several popular shows of the era. His appearances spanned from the family centered series to the comedic, including guest spots on the game show Hollywood Squares. Meanwhile, Howard Hesseman faced legal issues in 1966, long before his rise to fame due to a marijuana related arrest. Amidst these personal stories of actors, television was evolving. A particular series broke new ground by portraying the challenges of a divorced woman raising her two daughters, a departure from the comedic divorcee portrayals of earlier shows. This series marked a significant shift in how divorce was depicted on television, offering a more serious and reflective look at the realities of single parenthood. Wow, can you type? <laughs> Craig is a very... In the landscape of television, personal lives and professional paths often intersect in unexpected ways. Jim Hutton, an actor known for his work in the 70s, faced personal challenges when his first wife disclosed during their divorce that he believed his family was an obstacle to his career. Despite these claims, Hutton maintained a connection with his family, frequently visiting his former home. Meanwhile, Mackenzie Phillips left a lasting impression on audiences with her role as Julie Cooper, showcasing her talent in a series that became a staple of the era. On another note, Glenn Scarpelli, after contributing two seasons to the show, ventured to a new project, Jennifer Slept Here, which unfortunately saw an early end. His return to the original series was not realized, marking a turning point in his career trajectory. Anyway, CL is doing this whole number on, on fixed incomes. I really think it's unfair. You have really got to get out of here. In the landscape of television, connections and unexpected turns in storytelling often emerge. Michael Limbeck, known for his role in the series, shares an alma mater with notable figures such as Angelina Jolie and Nicolas Cage, highlighting the shared paths that can lead to diverse careers in entertainment. In a twist of narrative fate, a plot initially conceived for the series found its home in All in the Family, where a character's confrontation with a serious threat became a memorable television moment. Meanwhile, Pat Harrington Jr., another key cast member, brought a depth of knowledge from his academic background in political philosophy, adding a layer of intellectual depth to his on-screen persona. 
period. Oh, Anna, you are so exasperating. It's like working with my grandmother. Ah, I thought your grandmother was dead. In the 1960s, Chuck McCann brought laughter to Holmes by reading Sunday comics live on his show, donning costumes that matched the characters, including a memorable portrayal of Little Orphan Annie. Shelley Fabre, who later starred alongside Elvis Presley, once rivaled him on the music charts with her hit Johnny Angel before he reclaimed the top spot with Good Luck Charm. Behind her musical success were notable musicians like Glenn Campbell. Ned Revals, another familiar face, spent many years in Upland, California before moving to Arizona to be near her family. These individuals brought unique talents to the screen, leaving a lasting impression on audiences. Really terrific. I never had In the world of television, billing disputes are not uncommon, and this was the case for Mackenzie Phillips and Bonnie Franklin, leading to disagreements with the show's producers. While family dynamics off-screen influenced the lives of the cast, such as Jim Hutton's parents divorcing when he was a child, the actors also pursued meaningful work beyond the screen. Bonnie Franklin, for instance, dedicated herself to educational outreach through the arts, co-founding an organization that brought American plays into the classrooms of inner city schools, enriching students' exposure to cultural works. Michael Limbeck, known for his role as Max Horvath, faced a significant change in his character's storyline following the departure of Mackenzie Phillips, who played Julie Cooper. The plot adjusted to Julie leaving Max and their child, leading Max to relocate to Texas for a new job opportunity. Despite these changes, Lembeck continued to portray Max. Earlier in his career, Lembeck shared the screen with his father Harvey in an episode of The Partridge Family, showcasing a family dynamic in a labor dispute scenario. Meanwhile, Valerie Bertinelli, another prominent figure from the show, achieved recognition as one of the top child stars, securing a spot in VH1's list of notable young talents in the entertainment industry. But my mind, I... Yeah, uh, Barbara <laughs> Schneider has a day to In a notable crossover of storylines, an episode that was to feature Anne Romano as the central character in a serious plotline was shifted from the show to All in the Family. Meanwhile, Pat Harrington Jr., known for his role as the affable handyman, maintained a personal friendship with television personality Chuck Barris. The series also navigated real-life issues, as seen with Mackenzie Phillips, who portrayed Julie. Her struggles with substance abuse mirrored her character's turbulent storyline, leading to her temporary exit from the show when she sought treatment. Julie's narrative continued with her marriage and relocation, and upon Phillips' return, her character faced marital challenges. However, Phillips' off-screen difficulties culminated in her departure from the series after an incident on set, resulting in her character being written off permanently. This is going to be a disaster. Julie, please, would you take it easy? Come Before her role in the popular series, Bonnie Franklin was already a familiar face on Broadway, earning a Tony nomination for her performance in Applause, a musical adaptation of the classic film All About Eve. Meanwhile, Jim Hutton's personal life intersected with his professional one when his youngest daughter, born from his second marriage, was named after his memorable television character, Ellery Queen. Additionally, Franklin played a significant role in her family as the stepmother to Jeff and Julie Minoff, further showcasing her off-screen persona as a nurturing figure. In an episode, the character Alex faces the consequence of being paddled. Mackenzie Phillips, who played a role in the show, is the daughter of John Phillips from the famous musical group The Mamas and the Papas, and her mother is Susie Phillips January. Bonnie Franklin, known for her distinctive red hair and freckles, expressed that people often do not realize she is Jewish due to her appearance. <laughs> Bonnie Franklin, an actress with a rich family background, was the maternal aunt to Shoshana Joshua Adam Bush, Cupitz Dan, and Rabbi Jonathan Cupitz. Her personal life included marriage to Marvin Minoff, becoming his second wife, and later his widow. On the other hand, Jim Hutton, an actor with a penchant for mischief, often found himself in trouble due to his pranks. His antics ranged from property damage while inebriated to inappropriate behavior at formal events, leading to multiple expulsions from educational institutions and nearly a demotion in the military. 
His actions often targeted authority figures, reflecting a rebellious streak in his personality. After the conclusion of the popular series, Pat Harrington Jr. was set to continue his role in a new show, but the plans did not materialize as the network decided against it. Chuck McCann, known for his role as a film projectionist, had portrayed similar characters in two different films before his appearance on the show. Meanwhile, Bonnie Franklin took to the stage, performing in Grace and Glory at two notable playhouses in Maine and Massachusetts during the summer of 1997. Scurvy, cholera, malaria. <laughs> In the midst of evolving storylines, Alex's character took a darker turn, embodying the rebellious teenager following his sister Julie's departure. Meanwhile, Barbara consistently portrayed the role model sibling. Valerie Bertinelli, known for her role in the show, was also in the running for the lead in the 1987 film Adventures in Babysitting before Elizabeth Shue was cast. The character Ginny Rablicki saw a revolving door of actresses. Initially, Marsha Rod took on the role in an unaired pilot, but was removed to keep the focus on Bonnie Franklin's character. Mary Louise Wilson later filled the role during the 1976-1977 season after Richard Masters' exit, only to leave due to reported tensions with Franklin. Yeah, but I'll give you away. I'll give you away. <laughs> okay. I'll get the doorbell. <laughs> In the world of television, relationships formed on set can extend beyond the screen. This was evident in the life of Bonnie Franklin, who maintained close ties with her co-stars from a well-known show until her passing. Her influence as an actress was also significant in the career of Valerie Bertinelli, whom she guided in the craft of acting. The show's legacy is further connected to the Hutton family, with Jim Hutton being the patriarch to children who have made their own marks in various fields, including Timothy Hutton, an actor with a notable birth date of August 16, 1960, and Rebecca Punch Hutton, who holds a prominent position at Vanity Fair. Heidi Hutton, born a year before her brother, completes the trio of Jim Hutton's children, each carving out their unique paths. Here he is. Oh, I really should spend much more time in the... In the landscape of television, the personal lives of actors often intersect with their on-screen personas in unexpected ways. Pat Harrington Jr., known for his role as the beloved handyman, balanced his acting career with a family life that included four children and three grandchildren. While his character was considered for a spin-off, the idea did not materialize. Instead, life after the show saw cast members facing their own challenges. Mackenzie Phillips and Corey Feldman, both child stars found solace and support in each other as they navigated the difficulties of early fame and substance abuse. Their journey to recovery led them to the supportive community of alcoholics and narcotics anonymous in Hollywood. Valerie Bertinelli, while experimenting with substances, managed to steer clear of addiction. Len Scarpelli, who faced his own personal battles regarding his sexuality, also found a supportive network in Hollywood. Beyond their careers, these actors shared connections that extended into their personal lives, exemplified by Valerie Bertinelli's ancestral link to English royalty, tracing back to King Edward I. Excuse me. Somebody tripped me. Valerie Bertinelli, before becoming known for her role in the classic series, auditioned for a part in the film Taxi Driver, but was not selected, with the role going to Jodie Foster instead. Michael Limbeck, another cast member, comes from a family with roots in acting, being the son of Harvey Limbeck. Similarly, Pat Harrington Jr. also shares a family connection to the entertainment industry. As the son of Pat Harrington Sr., these connections highlight a generational link in the acting profession, showcasing a continuity of the craft within families. I'm sorry, Alex, I just can't. I'm all involved in this ad convention downtown. I understand. Set against the backdrop of Indianapolis, the show subtly incorporated the city's essence, initially featuring prominent landmarks in its opening titles. However, as new characters emerged, these visuals were replaced by more generic imagery, such as highway signs and broader interstate views. The influence of Norman Lear, a pivotal figure in television, was a decisive factor for cast members like Mackenzie Phillips, who eagerly joined the project upon his invitation. 
Additionally, the series' connection extended into other television narratives, with Lorraine Landry depicting Shelley Fabre in a biographical film, further intertwining the show's legacy with television history. Never went on nothing. <laughs> okay, so she sent you a card. In the landscape of television, actors often cross paths with various projects and personal milestones. Valerie Bertinelli, known for her role in a popular sitcom, found in love with Tom Vidal, leading to their engagement in 2010 after a six-year relationship. Meanwhile, John Hillerman's career included roles in films now preserved for their cultural and historical significance, such as The Last Picture Show, Blazing Saddles, and Chinatown. Bertinelli's own career saw her in the 1979 film Chomps, and she even auditioned for Raiders of the Lost Ark though it turned out to be an unexpected setup for a date by director Steven Spielberg. These instances highlight the diverse experiences actors encounter beyond the screen. In the landscape of television, connections and roles often intertwine in interesting ways. Mackenzie Phillips, known for her acting career, holds a personal connection to Jameson Leon Baldwin as his aunt. Her career intersected with Gloria Leroy's when Leroy guest starred as Hortense Hersey, a friend of the Handyman Schneider, in a memorable episode titled Anne's Secretary. Beyond her on-screen endeavors, Phillips took on a significant off-screen role as well, becoming the legal guardian for her co-star Patrick Levis during the filming of So Weird in Vancouver, providing support until he reached adulthood. I really want to get away. Sure, I understand that, Sam, but you have to get away. In the landscape of television, it was Mackenzie Phillips who emerged as the top earner among her peers, surpassing even Bonnie Franklin and Pat Harrington in terms of salary. Despite this financial hierarchy, it was Harrington alone who received an Emmy Award for his memorable role as Schneider. Adding to the show's web of connections, Valerie Bertinelli was known beyond her character, tied by marriage to Stacey Bertinelli. These elements combined to shape the show's dynamic and its place in television history. We've been robbed. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> we have been robbed. I just asked you. In the early episodes, a storyline presents a model named Candy Carothers, who supposedly hails from Logansport, Indiana. This detail strikes a dissonant chord as Logansport is not known for being a hub for international modeling. A more believable scenario would have placed her in Indianapolis, with frequent travels to New York, reflecting a lifestyle befitting a model of her claimed status. Turning to Jim Hutton, his interactions with director Sam Peckinpah were notably unique. Despite Peckinpah's volatile behavior, which included discharging a firearm towards Hutton on set, the two maintained a friendly rapport. Hutton's reputation for excessive drinking and womanizing was paradoxical given his apparent disinterest in both pursuits. Lastly, Joseph Campanella's family ties to the music industry are noteworthy. His sons, Dominic and Rob, were part of the quarter after a psychedelic rock band based in Los Angeles, contributing to the city's rich musical tapestry. I wonder if I can sleep without anybody snoring. <laughs> this isn't just a In the landscape of television, the journey from concept to screen can be a long one, often filled with unexpected terms. Such was the case for a show that was initially conceived as a platform to showcase the talents of Whitney Blake and her daughter Meredith Baxter. The concept, rooted in Blake's personal experiences as a mother, was pitched to networks in the 1960s but remained in limbo until Norman Lear acquired it a decade later. By then, Blake and Baxter were no longer suitable for the roles they inspired, leading to feelings of disappointment over the project's evolution. The series legacy continued with a reboot that saw original cast member Mackenzie Phillips return, not as her former character, but in a new role as a counselor aiding veterans with PTSD, reflecting the show's ongoing commitment to addressing contemporary issues. While Phillips and Glenn Scarpelli made their presence felt in the new iteration, other original cast members chose not to participate, allowing the reboot to forge its own identity of mine, David Kane. You've heard me mention David? Dave, oh yes, David, right, the one with the impeccable... In the face of personal health challenges and professional triumphs, the cast members of the classic show have had diverse experiences. Shelley Favre faced a serious health issue leading to a liver transplant in 2000 due to an autoimmune disorder. Valerie Bertinelli received recognition for her distinctive hairstyle, earning a place in the Hair Fans Hall of Fame in 2014. 
Mackenzie Phillips confronted addiction, undergoing rehabilitation multiple times to address her struggles with drugs and alcohol. These events highlight the personal journeys of the actors behind the beloved characters. Uh, at one point, Roberta got up and went to the bathroom. <laughs> Valerie Bertinelli grew up in Claymont, Delaware, bringing a touch of her upbringing to the screen. Shelley Fabry, with a diverse heritage tracing back to France, Ireland, Germany, and England, has roots as varied as her acting roles. Joseph Campanella, stepping out from the shadow of his older brother Frank, made his own mark in acting, showcasing his unique talent. Sophie, do you really deep inside like him that much? <laughs> <laughs>